Let's pray together. Loving God, as we come around your word now, I pray that you would uh, just give us ears to hear, give us minds to understand, and give us hearts that are receptive to hear your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are continuing our study looking uh, at the uh, Beatitudes, those statements at the beginning of uh, this Sermon on the Mount. If you remember, we've been looking at this. And uh, we are now up to Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. And we come to the next in our statements. You'll remember Jesus has said, blessed. And you remember what does the word blessed mean? It means happy. Okay, but it also means those who are walking straight before God. We want to walk on the straight and narrow, don't we? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? How do I do that? Jesus is telling us how to do that with these statements. And we've had, blessed are the poor in spirit. We've had, blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek, do you remember? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful and blessed are the pure in heart last week. And then this week, the next one, Matthew 5 verse 9. Blessed, how blessed, how happy, how straight walking before God are the peacemakers. For they shall be called children of God. So Jesus says, happy are peacemakers. And today we're going to talk about how to be a peacemaker. But before we talk about making peace, I guess we have to talk about what peace is. I I can't be a peacemaker if I don't know what peace is. It's like if I'm going to be a cake maker and I don't know what cake is. Does that make sense? I can't make peace unless I know what peace is. So here's the first point, and it's a question What is peace? I wonder if you were asked that question and you had to answer it. I wonder what you would say. Maybe it's when the grandkids go home. Is that peace? Maybe when that neighbour turns down the loud music. Some of you I know take notes and ready to write down what the definition of peace is. I'm not going to give it to you just yet. I want to build a bit of a foundation first. The Bible begins and ends with peace. I don't know if you've ever thought about that before or whether you've ever put that together that way. The Bible begins and ends with peace. In the garden, right at the beginning in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve had peace with God and peace with each other. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Before sin came into the world, they had peace. Once sin came into the world, conflict came into the world. And you may have never thought about this idea before, but all conflict is the result of sin. It is the fruit of sin. There was no conflict in the world before sin came into the world. Adam and Eve had peace with God and peace with each other. So the Bible begins with peace, but it also ends with peace. It ends telling us about a kingdom that's coming where peace rules, where there's no more pain and suffering. And there's, do you remember it says, the wolf shall lie down with the lamb? Lots of people think the Bible says that the lion will lie down with the lamb. Actually, that's not true. It says the wolf will lie down with the lamb. It's interesting how things get into our heads, isn't it? But it's talking about a kingdom of peace. And God is a God of peace. The Bible says that God is not the God of confusion, but is the author of... I'll let you fill in the blank. God is not the God of confusion, but the author of... That was pretty bad. Um, This is a sermon about peace. Okay, we're going to be talking about peace, so most of the answers are going to be P. 
peace. Okay? God is not the God of confusion, but the author of... Oh, wow, that was good. So, if God is a God of peace, and Jesus is the Prince of peace... Good, this is good, yeah, yeah. I have a simple question for you. If God is the author of peace, and Jesus is the Prince of peace, this is the question, why don't we have peace in the world? Well, I want to suggest to you a couple of reasons. Firstly, the devil fights against it. And secondly, people reject it. The reason we don't have peace in the world is because people have rejected peace. And you might say, I don't know, Pastor, if they've rejected peace. Listen to this. If you reject God, then you reject peace. Because God is peace, and there is no peace without God. And in our society today, we have rejected God, haven't we? We've wanted to get God out of certain spheres of society. We don't want him in our schools, we don't want him in our politics. We don't want God. So people reject God, and as a result, they have rejected peace. In 1945, the United Nations formed. And one of their goals was to provide peace for all succeeding generations. They have succeeded wonderfully at that goal, haven't they? No, they've failed miserably. Why? Because man cannot produce peace. Mankind cannot produce peace. Because peace comes from God. One person put it this way, peace is that glorious moment in history when everyone stops fighting to reload. We've had 3,500 years of recorded secular history. The Bible gives us 6,000 years, but secular history, 3,500 years of recorded history. And in that time, we've recorded 14,351 wars. 3,500 years, 14,351 wars. In that time recorded, 3.6 billion people have died in war. And in those 3,500 years of recorded history, 8,000 peace treaties have been signed. And guess how many have been broken? All of them. Because human beings cannot produce peace. So what is peace? Well, let me tell you. It's not the definition that you might sometimes hear. What's the usual definition of peace that we hear Well, peace is the absence of conflict. Anyone heard that before? Peace is the absence of war. By the way, that is not peace. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is the presence of righteousness. There is a huge difference. I can have turmoil in my life and still have Why? Because I have Jesus in my life. And when I say it's the presence of righteousness, we need to know that Jesus is righteousness. There is no righteousness without Jesus, and righteousness and peace are linked together. So let me put this another way. Peace is not the absence of something, it's the presence of of someone. It's the presence of Jesus. When Jesus comes into a situation, he brings peace. It doesn't matter if there's a storm. If you've got the Prince of Peace in the boat with you, you're okay. So we need to understand this, that when we talk about peace, we can't make peace. Okay? We can't make it. We can't create peace. Peace comes from God. 
So let me sum it up this way. Peace is Jesus. Peace is knowing Jesus, letting Jesus lead in every area of your life. And if there's an area in our lives where we don't have peace, then we need to get Jesus into that area of our lives. We need to bring righteousness, God's right standing into the situation that we're facing. We need to bring that in. So war and conflict are the result of sin. And the only way that we can have peace is to bring righteousness into the situation. And Jesus is righteousness. So let me just suggest to you, if you are having a confrontation with somebody and you bring Jesus into that situation, you are being a peacemaker. Do you catch that? Do you understand that? You are bringing God's righteousness into the situation. So question number two, what is a peacemaker? A peacemaker is one who invokes righteousness. A peacemaker is one who brings righteousness into the situation. Not somebody who just calls a truce, not just calling a ceasefire, but peace is righteousness coming in. It's bringing Jesus into the situation. And... I'm not going to get into it now, but it will be next week's message that this can have a knock-on effect. Jesus said, blessed are the persecuted for righteousness' sake. When you bring righteousness into a conflict, you'll be persecuted. Does that make sense? I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I have. The times where there's been an argument And I've said, okay, what does God say about this? What does the Bible say about this? And the other person just explodes. When you bring God's standard in, but that's next week's message. So, there is an order, remember. There is that order. Throughout the Beatitudes, if you're pure in heart, you will bring God into situations in your life where there's conflict and you will then face persecution. Okay, a peacemaker is somebody who brings righteousness into a situation. Let's look at some scripture. James, I love the book of James. It's a great book. If you've got time this week, read it. It's, it's incredible, but very, very challenging. James chapter 3, verse 17 But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peace-loving. Do you notice the order again? Jesus said the pure in heart, the peacemaker. James is going first pure, then peace-loving. It's interesting, isn't it, how it all links together. So James says the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peace-loving. And the next verse he says... Now the fruit of righteousness, so peace is connected with righteousness, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. That's where we get this idea of peace and righteousness. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And the only way you make peace is to sow righteousness. It's a great thing, but I wonder if we might try and apply this to our lives. What area of our life do we not have peace in? Are there any areas? That is the area where we need to bring the righteous standard of God into that area. We need to bring Jesus into that situation and we need to bring it under the lordship of Jesus Otherwise, we won't have peace. For many years of my life, I was a peacekeeper instead of a peacemaker. What do I mean by that? Well, Jesus didn't say, blessed are the peacekeepers. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Some of you might go, is there really a difference? Well, a peacekeeper 
is a person who tries to avoid conflict. Anyone? That's what I used to be. I used to try and avoid conflict. Anyone agree? Yeah? Or are you all, yeah, we're ready for conflict? A peacekeeper is, is someone who tries to avoid conflict. A peacemaker is someone who tries to resolve that conflict. And I, I'm guessing most of us don't like conflict. But we need to understand that unless we address the situation and bring the righteous standard of God into that situation, we won't have peace. And we won't have peace in our nation. Look at this from Proverbs 14.34. Righteousness makes a nation great. How many of you remember Donald Trump's slogan? Do you remember the election? Let make America great again, he said. Well, he can't. There's only one way that a nation can be made great, and that is through righteousness and bringing God's righteous standard. Our country is so far away from God's righteous standard, isn't it? And we wonder why. Wonder why things are not going well in our country. Proverbs hits the nail on the head. Righteousness makes a nation great, but sin degrades any people. Let me say it this way. Righteousness brings peace to a nation. Sin causes conflict. Well, how about... This passage, Isaiah 57, verse 21. There is no peace for the wicked. How many of you have heard that phrase used? How many of you knew it was from the Bible? There is no peace for the wicked. Here's another way to say it. There's no peace for those who don't walk in righteousness. Righteousness is always connected to peace. And peace is always connected to righteousness. here's another beautiful passage a person whose desire rests on God he will, God will preserve in perfect peace interesting, if you have a desire for God and if you trust in him he will preserve you in perfect peace If I asked you this morning, most of you might say that you don't have perfect peace. Is that right? But according to the Bible, we can have perfect peace. If we keep our mind and our trust in the Prince of Peace and our desire for God in our whole life, if we bring the Prince of Peace into every situation, and maybe just think of a few areas in your life where you don't have peace? What might they be? Family, relationships, finances, peace in your mind, in your health. So many areas that maybe we just don't have perfect peace. But if we don't have peace in those situations, we can bring Jesus, we can bring peace into those areas. And so here's question number three. Who are the peacemakers? I'm going to look, uh, before I finish, I'm going to look at uh, a passage of scripture from 2 Corinthians. And I'm going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This chapter has two very famous verses in it and most of you will be familiar with them. Okay, I'm going to read these two famous verses and then I'm going to look at the ones in the middle. So, these are bookends. The first, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm sure you've all heard this before. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Heard that one before? Okay. Wonderful. Now I want you to look at 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Again, an incredible verse of scripture. For he, God, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. That's the gospel, right? 
Wonderful. So we've got, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Purity. Blessed are the pure in heart. Verse 21, we become the righteousness of God and there are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are the persecuted for righteousness. Do you see how we've got these bookends of these three Beatitudes? And in the middle, the middle one is peace. And I'm going to read to you verses 18, 19 and 20 from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, but I'm not going to read from it in any version that you have. I'm going to read to you from Paul's version. Okay? And there's a reason why. What I am going to do over the next, what I did was I took the word reconciled and put what it means, which is peace. Okay? Hopefully you'll follow with me. I'm going to show you. Look at these verses. These are in between. Paul writes, Now all things are of God, who has made peace. The NIV says reconciled. That's what it means. To be reconciled means to make peace. So Paul says, now all things are of God and God has made peace with us through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of peacemaking. Remember, we're trying to find out who are the peacemakers. He has given us the ministry of peacemaking. Verse 19 that is, that God was in Christ making peace with the world, not counting their sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of peacemaking. Are you following along? Do you see how this works? And then in verse 20, Now then, we are ambassadors. We are peacemakers. For Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you, Paul says, on Christ's behalf, make peace with God. Be reconciled to God. So who are the peacemakers? Answer, those who've made peace with God. If you've made peace with God, you have now been given the responsibility in the kingdom to be a peace maker. You're an ambassador. Everyone okay with the idea of an ambassador? If I'm the British ambassador to America, what's my job? My job is to represent the crown in Washington, D.C. Yes? You are God's ambassador. What's your responsibility? To represent the throne of God in this world. And you are to be a peacemaker. You are to bring Jesus into every area of your life. So you are an ambassador. You are a peacemaker. And this is the thing about making peace. 2 Corinthians 5 says that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself, making peace. Not just believers, the whole world, not counting their sins against them. So the whole world, Jesus is making peace with them. Now, we're not saying the whole world has been saved. But the question is, have you made peace with God? He's made peace with you. He brought Jesus into this world. He brought God's righteous standard into this world. And the question is, are you going to bring him into your life? So when you're sharing your faith with somebody, you can start off by going, guess what? God's made peace with the world. But ask the question, have you made peace with God? It's interesting, isn't it? So our ministry here on earth is to make peace. It's to bring Jesus into every area of our lives and in every area of the world we live in. So we are to be peacemakers and the fruit of us being a peacemaker is what Jesus says, they shall be called children of God. 
If you are a peacemaker, you will be called a child of God. We sang it this morning, our first song. I'm a child of God, I am chosen. I'm honoured, I'm favoured, I'm adopted into God's family. There's a place in his house. We sang it. In other words, if I'm a peacemaker, if I've made peace with God and help others to make peace with God, then I am a child of God and I have a place and I'm included in his family. I am blessed and honoured and loved as a son or daughter of God. And my job as a representative of God is to bring peace. Now remember, the Beatitudes are how to get in the kingdom and how to live in that kingdom. How do you and I get in the kingdom? Well, some of you will remember, maybe it was many years ago when you made peace with God. When you heard the message that God had made peace with the world, not counting their sins against them. Do you remember that? And you went, I want to bring Jesus into my life. I'm going to make peace with God. That's how you get in. Hallelujah, praise God. We're excited about that, aren't we? Yeah, yes, you can smile, it's okay. That's how we get in, but how do we live ongoing from that moment, whenever it was, 1945 or whatever it was, when you accepted the peace of God in your life, how are we to live? Well, these are the Beatitudes. We are to live this way. And we are to be a peacemaker. We are to bring peace into the situations that we face in our life. We need to bring Jesus into our home We need to bring Jesus into our relationships, into our finances, into our struggles, into our anxiety, into our doubt, into our depression, into our leisure time, into our retirement, into our work. So what situation do you not have peace in in your life? What area of your life do you need to have peace? Whatever situation we are going through, we are to bring peace. We are to bring God's right standing, to bring Jesus into those situations, into the midst of conflict. That's what it means to be a peacemaker. And we're to do that, but we are to also help others to do that. And in that way, we are then peacemakers. And Jesus says, how happy, how blessed, How straight walking before God are those who have made peace with God and help others to do so. For you shall be called a child of God and you will be included in God's family and have a place in the kingdom that is to come. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you have made peace with the world. Father, you sent Jesus, the righteous standard of God, into this world to die on a cross for us, not counting our sins against us. Thank you that you have made peace with us. Father, I pray that we would also take up the baton, that we would take on the mission and the message that we are to be peacemakers in our world, that we are to bring Jesus into the midst of every situation. And maybe there are situations in our own lives this morning where we have conflict. Father, I pray for those here this morning or those listening online. Father, I pray that we would bring Jesus into those situations in our lives where there is conflict. That we would bring peace into our lives. 
Father, as we accept Jesus into our lives, as we go on each day, bringing Jesus every day into every sphere of our life, Father, I pray that we would take up the ministry of helping others to do the same. Our friends, our family, those we come in contact with. Father, you have brought peace. May we receive that peace, but may we also give that peace to others so that we may be called your sons and daughters and that we may know what it is to receive the blessing of God in our lives. How blessed. How blessed. How happy, how straight walking. Father, forgive us for those times where we have not brought peace into our lives or the lives of others. Help us to do it this week. Jesus, come into every situation, we pray. Amen. Amen. And as we close our time,